Buenas noches, señores y señores. Estoy encantada de estar aquí esta noche. That's about the extent of my Spanish. So I'm pleased to be here and I'm happy to share with you some information about COVID and hopefully we can answer the questions that you may have in your mind. So I'm going to share my screen and go through some slides. And hopefully everybody can see my slide deck. And so we've been in this pandemic for just about 11 months, maybe a little bit longer. And people are wondering, you know, what's going on? What are the new updates? What is this COVID virus? And there's been lots and lots of questions about uh, COVID. And so I'd like to go through some general information with you and hopefully share some factual information. So what do we know about COVID? It was discovered in China in 2019. And it's named for those spike-like projections, as you can see on the picture, that are on the outside of the virus. So the CO stands for corona, VI or VID stands for virus, and the D stands for disease. 19 stands for the year in which it was discovered. We do know that COVID-19 is a respiratory illness. It's spread by droplets. So what does that mean? So as you're speaking or talking or singing, anytime you open your mouth that these little droplets come out and um, if they have virus in them it's easy for you to inhale them it can get into your lungs and then the virus itself can impact many different organs in your body not just the lungs it can spread and have an impact on your kidneys on your heart um, all different organs within your body most of the spread is asymptomatic. And what we mean by that is that people don't, may not have symptoms and actually have the virus and can spread it to other people who then may become very ill. And so it's important to understand that you may not have any symptoms at all and may actually be infected with COVID. And that's why we stress so much that you should protect yourself. There's a lot of different symptoms with COVID. The most common ones are fever, cough, nasal congestion, flu and cold-like symptoms, body aches and pains, but some people lose their sense of taste or sense of smell. And those are some of the things that we see, but typically any type of symptom that you have that's different from normal. Anytime you feel ill, you may have allergy symptoms, anything that's not quite the same, you ought to think about going ahead and getting tested. There's a lot of different treatments and we won't get into the, all of that science around treatment, but it's important to know that every single hospital and facility now in the country does have a, a, a routine by which they are managing patients. There's a standard of care, how patients are managed with COVID. And when you come into the hospital and you're tested positive, they follow that, that pathway for management. Let's talk a little bit about COVID-19 data and why it's so important and why we call this a pandemic. Uh, as of the other day, worldwide, there were over 111 million cases with 2.4 million deaths. In the United States, we have over 27 and a half million cases and we passed that unfortunate mark of 500,000 deaths just the other day. Very, very sad. In New York State, we have over 1.5 million cases and over 46,000 deaths. This is important for the black and brown community because we have a, a, almost a two times uh, higher rate of death and severe illness in, due to COVID-19. This data just changes every single day, almost by the hour. And there are COVID trackers and updates that will allow uh, scientists to keep track of where we are with respect to the disease. There are three new variants. So what are that? What is that? Those are uh, the virus that has changed just a little bit. And so the three variants are what they call commonly the Brazil, the South Africa, and the United Kingdom. They do have letter and number names that identify them specifically. The science currently says that those that these variants may be a little bit more infectious. That means that they're easier to spread. We don't know if they make you sicker yet. Um, that, that data is still being reviewed and we're still trying to understand what these variants mean. We certainly know that by the end of this year, the United Kingdom variant is probably going to be the most common variant available uh, that's present in the United States. They're also looking at seven new American variants that seem to be just in the United States. They're not sure if these are really different types of viruses or different um, 
presentations of the virus, they're currently being studied to determine if they really are something new. So how do we stop this spread? How do we keep this from uh, going further? How do we keep um, the virus from impacting our family and friends? How do we protect ourselves? And this is some of the most important things that we can do to stop the spread. Wear a mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. So make sure you're wearing a mask, make sure that you're washing your hands, make sure that you're maintaining six feet of distance. When we talk about people contracting the virus, we know that if you spend more than 15 minutes, less than six feet away from, from somebody who has COVID, you are more than likely to contract the virus. We also know that large social gatherings are places where people contract the virus. And you, like I said, you might feel great. You might not feel anything. And you may think that you're not at risk and may actually have the virus and spread it to someone who can become critically ill. So two masks are better than one. Why? Because one mask protects me from you and the other mask protects you from me. You can also wear gaiters, but you wanna make sure that you double them up and get them around your face and not just wear them single. You want to make sure that you wear the mask properly. I've seen people wearing masks all kinds of ways, down under their chin, under their nose, hanging from one ear. That just kind of negates the impact of the mask. You want to make sure that it's covering your nose and your mouth completely. And if you have glasses, that it's up underneath your glasses. If your glasses are fogging or steaming or you're seeing um, mist around them, then you know that your mask is not on properly and it's easy for a virus to get into your system. Don't touch your face. We know that sometimes if the virus has, if, so if someone in front of you coughed or sneezed or laughed and a droplet uh, came on a surface and you touched that surface right after that and then touched your face, it's easy to transmit the virus. So again, wear a mask, wash your hands, social distance. That's the best way that we can stop the spread. And we know certainly in New York State that once we started masking, washing hands, social distancing, and having people stay at home, that our numbers began to drop. So let's switch a little bit and talk a little bit about the vaccines. So what do vaccines do? They protect us by helping the immune system develop a defensive memory. So your immune system is your defense mechanism, and it's how it fights off invaders such as viruses and bacteria. And the, and the vaccines help your immune system develop a memory to that, to that particular bacteria or virus so that when they see it, when your body sees it, it can mount an immediate defense and fight it off. There's currently two vaccines available. One is the Pfizer, one is the Moderna. They're both about 95 to 96% effective in, in reducing transmission of the virus. But we do know that they completely protect you from becoming critically ill or severely ill and absolutely protect against death from the virus. It's a new technology in the sense that th this type of technology has not been used before, but it has been studied for more than 10 years. So it's not like we all of a sudden came up with this particular technology. It has been around for some time and has been studied extensively. We'll talk a little bit more about myths around the vaccine. There are three more vaccines in development and the most recent one is the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. That's going to the FDA tomorrow for uh, emergency authorization, emergency use authorization. And what that means is that there's enough data to say that the, the vaccine is safe and that it works. And the FDA will allow you, the uh, co drug company to make the vaccine and distribute it to the community. But it will still be very closely monitored as they watch to make sure that it continues to be effective and that it continues to be safe. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is, is one shot and it's felt to be 84 or so percent effective. Do note that the, both the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines are uh, two shots. They're, Pfizer is about 21 days apart and Moderna is about 28 days apart. And you do need to get both vaccines, both shots in order to be immunized. So a few more vaccine myths and facts. So does the vaccine cause COVID? Absolutely not. There's no live virus in the vaccine at all. It cannot give you COVID. You cannot contract COVID from, from getting the vaccine. Can you still get COVID if you've been vaccinated? Well, yes, in a sense. If you've only had one shot, you're about 45 to 50% uh, uh, protected from the, from the virus. 
And so if you get one shot and then you're exposed to someone who has COVID, it's possible, unlikely, but possible that you could contract COVID before you get your second shot. You're not fully protected until about two weeks after the second shot. So again, it's important that even if you're vaccinated, that you wear your mask, that you wash your hands and you social distance. So what are the side effects of the vaccine? So some people have a little bit of fever, body aches and pains, sore arm. Some people have cold and flu-like symptoms. And we like to think of these not so much as side effects, but that your immune system is actually responding to the vaccine. It's building an, an immune response. It's building a defensive memory. It's recognizing that there is a, a blueprint here. And I, I should mention also that the vaccine in and of itself, the way it's made is that it, it doesn't have virus in it. It, is, it presents a blueprint to the body to, to show the body what the virus looks like. It's a, it's a map of what this virus will look like. So when your body sees the virus, it recognizes it and it's able to build a response. Does it alter your DNA? Again, no, it does not. It doesn't get into the cell, into the nucleus. So it does not alter your DNA at all. It doesn't have any impact on your DNA. Again, this is just a map or a blueprint to show your body how to build a response. Can you get the vaccine if you have allergies? Absolutely, yes, you can get the vaccine if you have allergies. And when we say allergies, we're talking about a severe allergic response. People who have swollen lips or uh, have difficulty breathing and have to carry an EpiPen. Those are the folks that we wanna watch a little bit more closely, but you can still get the vaccine if you have allergies. Some people have asked, is this experimentation like Tuskegee or with Henrietta Lacks? And again, this is not experimentation in that sense at all. In those situations, um, African-Americans were isolated and were treated differently than the rest of the population. Since that time, we have protections against uh, that type of experimentation. And in this particular case, you have to look and see who's running to get the vaccine. It's not us. It's everybody else that's running to try and get the vaccine. So you've got to ask yourself, why is everybody else in the world running to get the vaccine and we are not? And so there's no uh, separation or different treatment for African-Americans. Um, this vaccine in, in particular, there was an African-American doctor right here in Rochester, Dr. Branch, that worked on the development of the vaccine. And I think that's really important to note that there are people that look like us that are working on developing the vaccine. What is herd immunity? Well, herd immunity means that enough of the community is protected against a virus or against the bacteria that it's unlikely to spread it to people who are not infected. And so to get to herd immunity, we have to have about 70% of folks protected or immunized against the, against the virus in order to protect those who are not uh, immunized or do not have immunity. And so the more of us that are vaccinated, the more the community is protected. A little bit about the vaccine rollout. Well, where can you get the vaccine? That is the number one question that everybody asks. And I wish I had an answer for that. But the best thing that I can tell you is to go to the website in New York State, mieligible.covid19vaccine.health.newyork.gov. That will tell you where the eligible sites are. And certainly um, most of the news stations are keeping us up on where you can get vaccine. It's currently a phased rollout. So healthcare workers, emergency personnel, people age uh, 65 and older, people with chronic conditions, teachers and school faculty, are all currently eligible. And again, if you go to the website, am I eligible? It'll let you know if you are currently eligible to get the vaccine. There's no cost, it's free and supplied by the federal government. There may be an administration fee or a charge for actually getting the vaccine that's for the needles and for the personnel to administer it. But most insurance companies are completely covering the cost of the, that fee. And certainly Excellus Blue Cross and Blue Shield is covering the cost of the administration. So just a little bit about COVID. So what's the difference between quarantine and isolation? So quarantine is when you separate yourself to see if you're gonna develop disease. So if you've been exposed to somebody or you think that you're sick, you should separate yourself from other people. That means don't go to the store, don't go grocery shopping, don't hang out with your family, don't go to a party, do not go to a restaurant, but you should separate yourself. And then if you develop symptoms, you certainly want to be tested. 
Isolation is when someone who's actually been tested positive, and that means that they have to isolate themselves from everyone else around them to avoid spread of the disease. And just to repeat, can I spread COVID if I'm not sick? You certainly can. And it, it, you know, really most of our spread is asymptomatic. So people who feel totally fine have been out there spreading COVID. That's why we need to wear masks so we can protect each other from this, from this virus that spread through droplets. When we cough, when we sneeze, when we talk, even just breathing, we are breathing in and out uh, droplets all the time. And it, that's how this virus is spread. So just a quick second on pandemic fatigue. So I know everybody is sick and tired of being stuck in the house and not going out and doing things. And so you wanna make sure that you're taking care of yourself. If you feel like you're stuck in the wash, rinse and repeat cycle, you're doing the same thing day in, day out. You stop getting dressed, you stop bathing. Sweats are your new church clothes for your new outfit. You grew a beard, you gained more than 10 pounds. You haven't had prayer, you haven't talked to anybody, nobody has seen you. You're binge watching TV and social media, or if you feel alone, overwhelmed and defeated. And this can be anybody at any age. So it's really important to start recognizing what are the signs and symptoms? What are the things that are saying that there may be a problem and you need to seek some help? And with that, I will end my presentation and turn it back over to Mike. Dr. Harris. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. That was a fantastic presentation. And in fact, it was so thorough that you really covered many of the, the questions that we have in the chat. But there are a few questions for you. So the first one is, are there any, any animal or human blood factions in the vaccine? There are no animal, no fetal blood, no human blood, nothing like that is in the vaccine. So it is safe for pretty much anyone to, to take. There's no human tissue okay. in it. The next question, are, are there any current vaccines that are okay for children under 16 years of age? At present, the vaccines are, are not indicated for children under 16. Uh, it looks like the Johnson & Johnson vaccine may have an indication uh, in the future down to age 13. Um, but we are, you know, that data is start, currently being studied to see what the safety and efficacy is for children. So they're hoping that, that by the fall, that younger children will be included. The Pfizer vaccine, I think, is down to age uh, 16 and Moderna down to 18, and Johnson & Johnson is 16. Thank you. The next question is, will we ever realistically get to a COVID zero? Hmm. similar to the flu not getting to zero. Yeah, so I think it's unlikely that we're going to get to a COVID zero. I think that you're right. It's just like the like influenza, which is around all year long, it's just that it has seasonal peaks. That's probably going to be our new normal. And that's again why, you know, it's important to consider vaccination because we can help reduce the, the amount of spread and make sure that people are protected. Thank you. The next question is, does the vaccine have microchips in it so they can track us? There are no microchips. I'm sorry, I should have put that in the facts because that's the one I hear all the time. There are no microchips in the vaccine. They cannot track you. Uh, there's no way for them to be able to do that. It, it's not designed to do anything different for black folk compared to white folk. It's this, it is the vaccine that's designed for, for all people and no chips. Another question is, how long does the vaccine last for? Yeah, so currently they're thinking that you will only have to get one vaccine. That's the, the current data supporting that we will only need to get vaccinated once. However, they're still studying to determine whether or not it'll be an annual shot like with the flu shot. And some of that will depend on the variants and the, the way the current vaccines protect against the variants that are developing. Um, we do know that um, you know after, after uh, two weeks you have full immunity. After 90 days, they wanna make sure that you are absolutely wearing a mask and washing your hands because it's not clear how long the vaccine will last. Definitive proof is still um, in the works and data still being collected as to how long that will last. Is the vaccine safe for pregnant women? The vaccine is safe for pregnant women. 
Um, the, you know, the obstetric societies do monitor and track those. And one important thing to note, to note is that there's a thing called the VAERS, the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System. So if you have any symptoms at all after you've had the vaccine, even very mild things, even if you're not even sure if it's related to the vaccine or not, you can go right to that website, vaers.gov. And you can put in your, your symptoms, and that is a national website that tracks all symptoms and reviews to see if these, if any of the things that you're feeling are related to the vaccine. And so you have to remember how, uh, very, very quickly, how drug studies and drug trials and medication trials are done when they report side effects. So if someone gets a medication and you go outside and get hit by a car, that's gonna be reported as an adverse event related to the, to the medication, even though we know that it's not. And so anything that occurs within that study period is listed as an adverse event. And they will, they will um, uh, study it very carefully to determine whether or not um, there's any effects from the, from the vaccine. And the next one is one a question we often hear around vaccines is, does the vaccine cause autism? The vaccine absolutely does not cause autism. Another question is, is 5G technology related to the vaccine? 5G technology. So no, I, I'm trying to understand that question. I know that there's been some stuff in social media about 5G technology doing stuff to, to people, but there's nothing in the vaccine that would be related to uh, 5G or trans, you know, using uh, uh, electronics to, uh, to communicate with people. Those are two unrelated things. So no, the vaccine doesn't have anything to do with 5G technology. Are there stem cells that are used in the vaccine? So this is messenger RNA technology and no, there are no stem cells in the vaccine. Another question is if we get the vaccine, do we have to wear masks? Yes, you do. And so I can't stress that enough that you do have to continue to wear a mask, continue to socially distance and continue to wash your hands. And again, because it's, an, it's unlikely but possible that you can contract the virus, you won't get, you yourself won't get sick, but you could pass it on to other people. We're still in the midst of a pandemic and we ha we, this is not the time to let our guard down and start getting comfortable and watch our numbers go back up again. And uh, if I have asthma, can I get the vaccine? You certainly can get the vaccine if you have asthma. You have to allow them to watch you for uh, at least 15 to 30 minutes after you get the vaccine, but there's no contraindication or no reason why you cannot get the vaccine because you have asthma. In fact, people with asthma and COPD and diabetes, those are the chronic conditions that we want you to go get vaccinated because you're the one that's more likely to get severe disease than other people who are healthy. I'm um, just checking the chat because I think there are a couple of questions in there. Uh, one is about the doctor you mentioned, Dr. Branch. Who is he? It's a she and she's at the University of Rochester and she was involved in the development of the vaccine. Okay. Well, Dr. Harris, thank you so much. 